Hello and welcome to the Elephant Lounge. I'm your host, Tuesday. I want to thank you for joining me again. We're talking about Leaving Neverland and today we are going to go over this interview with Brandy Jackson. And we have got the niece of Michael Jackson on the phone right now. Brandy, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. No, I imagine it would be a crazy time to be a, a Jackson right now. What is the sentiment like among your family members? This must be so full on. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's absolutely crazy. Um, it, it's it's sad, you know, what's going on. But we're strong and we're fighters, so we're going to keep going. But this whole thing is really sad to have all of this happen as he's as he's passed and he's not here to defend himself. This is not an argument. We talk about dead people all the time. It's called history. But this sort of thing, though, I have to tell you, we're used to. We've been fighting battles my whole life since I've been a child. So even my, my family's been doing it longer. Because your uncle was a pedophile. That's why. So it centers around, the documentary centers around two people. But we're going to concentrate on uh, Wade Robson, who was an Australian boy that went over, won a dance contest and went over and spent a lot, well, now lives in Los Angeles, is now a big choreographer. But you were together with Wade Robson. Is that correct? You're in a relationship with him. That's correct, yeah. Um, it, it's seven plus years. Uh, you know, we met in about 91. Um, now listen to this. Seven plus years? Nobody describes their past relationships like that. They say seven years, almost eight years, a little over seven years. She's very evasive about this, number one. Number two, she says they met in 1991. Now, add seven years. That's 1998. Um, and you would have been young. How old, how old were you both at that point? When we met, about nine or ten years old. About nine or ten. You were born in 82. Add ten years, 92. You were nine. Approximately. Okay. Um, but, you know, we, when we did start dating, it was like this a seriously age-appropriate relationship. Or, you know, like a puppy love situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And who, um, intru who, you who know, introduced you? My uncle, my uncle Michael introduced us um, when Wade and I had met on a few sets of photo shoots that we had done. He developed a crush on me and had asked my uncle to introduce us further to set us up for some time to spend together. So my uncle did. We all went to the ranch and we spent about five to seven days there getting to know each other. And, and that's how we met. So let's go to, so thank you for that. That's the sort of gives us up to the history of it. Let's go to a, a tweet the, uh, that you sent out. Um, this is you. Wade and I were together for over seven years, but I bet that isn't in his uh, documentary, and you put documentary in quotation marks. Because you're not in his documentary because you're not a thing, Brandy. Because it would ruin his timeline. And did I mention it was my uncle? Hashtag Michael Jackson. How does it ruin his timeline? How? Who was set up. Wade is not a victim. Hashtag Wade Robson is a liar. So why do you think that... He's such a horrible liar. You stayed with him for seven plus years. Wade Robson is lying about uh, his, uh, what he said happened between him and your uncle. You know, he. one of the things that he talks about, or insinuates, is that my uncle was grooming him and that he was kind of saving him for himself. Uh, and they had this relationship, this, this loving relationship, this sexual relationship that had gone on for years. And it really wasn't like that. Wade was not around him in the context that he's saying. Uh, he and I had been together in this time frame. And I understand that he, you know, he met him. Really? Because Michael Jackson's security noted concern over Wade crossing the street in the middle of the night from his um, apartment, from his apartment over to your uncle's condo or whatever it was. He had some hideout. So other people noticed this. You obviously didn't because you weren't there. So this was just a few years before Wade and I met. But after that time that I met him, I can speak for sure that Wade was not around him. You don't know that. The way that he says he was. So you, you, uh, and then also my uncle isn't the person that he's describing as being, uh, you know, grooming Wade for himself. My uncle was, if, if anything, grooming him for me. Oh, please. Oh, please. So, I'd have to say it in that sense. You deny that then there was a sexual relationship, but was he sleeping in the same bed as, as you or your uncle? Uh, Wade was at his own house. Wade, Wade spent, he makes it, you get this impression that Wade was at... Wade lived in an apartment across from where your uncle had a place. At the ranch this entire time. 
Um, that no, he never said he was at the ranch the entire time. That is not his story. That, that's not the case. So there were sleepovers with, you know, a bunch of kids where we would all be at my uncle's house and we would sleep in the bed together. There, it wasn't just like Wade was there by himself. There was multiple people. So he's got these stories that, um, you know, give you this really sinister image of, of what was taking place, but it really didn't happen that way. And that's why he doesn't mention me in this documentary because it would kill everything he's trying to, to insinuate. But he if, does, if there was something untoward going on and they were um, up to no good, you can imagine. He doesn't mention you because you're not a thing. And that that would be hard to talk about, that they probably wouldn't uh, talk about that. He wouldn't tell people about that. You can imagine it would have been happening in a quite a secretive manner, wouldn't it? It, it? To me, it's not surprising. If it happened, of course they wouldn't tell people. Of course. I, I, don't, I don't expect that he would have come to verbally tell me. Obviously you do. Otherwise, why are you saying these things? That these things were happening. Um, however, his behavior... And first of all, I, I'm going to talk about his behavior. It was very, very normal. We had a very uh, normal relationship between. It was very normal, Brandy. You're a Jackson. You do not come from a normal family, okay? You are nine years old to sixteen years old. You don't know what normal is between the two of us. But uh, and if he's so normal, why are you calling him a liar and calling him all these things now? The other thing that I need to stress to you is that, like I said, I spent a lot of time at Wade's house. He wasn't with my uncle. Mm. That, that wasn't the case. My uncle is a very busy man on top of it. He was hardly even at his own home. He was constantly out of the country. It doesn't seem like you spent a lot of time with him. You have one picture with him. Country traveling. Wade was in Los Angeles working. So, but Brandy, so this, did you, this, but Brandy, did you ever, let's say Wade was in a room by himself with Michael Jackson, you're not in that room. You don't know what happened then. Absolutely. Right. 100%. But, right. but you have to understand the narrative as to the, the way that he's telling this story. Your like narrative. We also have to understand your narrative. Like, we also have to understand yeah. that, you, you know, that this is your uncle, and we understand that you've got uh, an opinion and, a, and your own and you timeline of what happened here, and you love and him. And you don't want your uncle to be a bad guy, of course. Why? why? Well, he is a bad guy. What would you think? Uh, it's not about that, though. Well, why it's would not someone about that. I'm... But, Brandy, why would someone now, what does Wade have to gain mm. from any of this? We spoke to someone yesterday Nothing. who worked in the dance community in Los Angeles who said that he's now almost a pariah, that he's being, people are coming out against him. We've seen music executives coming out writing long pieces against him. What on earth would someone have to gain to put the... Nothing. Through? Wade doesn't have anything to lose. Wade doesn't have anything to lose. Wade is married. Wade has a child. And how about you, Brandy? Nobody married you, did they? Nobody gave you a child. You're almost 40 years old and have no children. Um, and, and that's why he, if you go back to 2013, when he's referencing these breakdowns that he was having, these financial breakdowns, he was having difficulty with his work. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's convenient, isn't it? That everybody that ever told anything about Jackson, told the truth about who your uncle was, they all somehow have money problems or they need money. And that's the motivation. Isn't that just the most convenient way to tear somebody down? Um, then he had basically claimed that that Cirque show was happening. He had broadcasted it, talked about it publicly. Yeah, because he did have the job. And then he flaked out and he wanted to be hired back again. And it did it. It fell through for him. And that's a hard thing in this industry. When, when doors are being shut in your face and you don't know which direction to go to, you sort of feel a little lost. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that my uncle was a lifeline for him. So he decided to come out and say he was molested? Are you kidding me? That's what you think people do when they're suffering from financial problems? They go around telling people they were molested? So he went through a depression when my uncle was gone, but it wasn't because his lover was gone. His friend was gone. His lifeline was gone. Have you had a chat to um, Wade since all this happened? Have you reached out to him? No, I haven't spoken to him um, since my uncle passed in 2009. Of course. Uh, which is at that time, both he and his mother called me trying to figure out mostly how to get to Paris Prince and Blanket. So 
So I, I'm telling you that these are people that have a different sort of agenda than the average person is used to dealing with. But you dated him for seven years. This is something that I've seen um, so Brandy, from people about, my whole life. Brandy, what about the other boys, though? What about Jane Safechuck? What about Jordy? What? About Here come the lies. A whole plethora of lies. About the, you know, the other boys. What's their story? Yeah, and that's something that I ask people to research and really look into. Because, for example, Jordy that you mentioned, he never testified. There was never a criminal well, suit. Paid. Because he was paid. It's part of the settlement. Hush money. As soon as they got the money, it, the insurance company paid it. and that's No. No insurance company paid it. There was no insurance involved. Transamerica came out and said, We will not pay because we do not consider inappropriate touching of a child to be an accident. Those were their words. And if you look on the signatures of the settlement, there's no insurance company involved. Read the settlement. There is an admission of inappropriate contact between Michael Jackson and Jordan Chandler. That's something that people don't know. My uncle paid it because... Or I Aha! Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Let's listen to it again. And that's something that people don't know. My uncle paid it because... Or I should say the insurance company paid it. Ah, see? Do you, do you see how she caught herself? My uncle paid it. Oh, my uncle paid it because, or I should say the insurance... Yeah, you catch that? She caught herself. Yeah, your uncle did pay it. We know this. company paid it because they were gearing up for a criminal suit. So you don't and think they paid it? No, they weren't gearing up for a criminal suit. They did not want the criminal suit. They settled before the investigation even ended. And it's an admission of guilt. Some people view it that way, absolutely. But you have to understand that in 1993, you were able to file a civil suit against... You were 11 years old in 1993. You don't know anything about the 90s. Someone ...before filing a criminal suit. So that's what was coming up, and the insurance company just said, we'll pay the... No, they did not. ...the $20 million while you start preparing for your criminal suit. I mean, but it's a lot of money, Brent. Insurance doesn't pay out $20 million to, for diddling a child. A lot, a lot of money. Of money. I, I, understand, but please, I understand, but please let me finish. As soon as they got their, their money... They, Georgie refused to testify. Because he couldn't. He'd be in breach of the settlement. said my father made me do these things. This is something that a lot of people don't either remember that, or don't. Go, go, go back. We're going back here. Listen to this. This is another outright lie. He said my father made me do these things. No, he did not. No, he did not. There's absolutely no evidence. And as far as Messero saying... We were going to put people on the stand to say he was lying. That's hearsay. You can't do that. That's why he was saying that crap. It's all a bunch of bloviated nonsense. This is something that a lot of people don't either remember or don't know. We don't remember and don't know because it didn't happen. Because this was over 20 years ago. So people really need to go do their research. Wow. And understand that. My uncle wasn't given a chance to fight in 1993. Wasn't given a chance to fight? Are you kidding me? They wouldn't, pro they wouldn't um, testify, so he didn't have a chance to defend. Because he shut him up with hush money. Defend himself. Mm -hmm. He was labeled as a guilty man before even being convicted. Mm -hmm. When he finally oh, had a chance God. to fight in 2005, <sighs> he was found not guilty on 10 counts. So that there was no evidence against him. No evidence, but he was arrested and charged. And you're right, a, a lot of the stuff got thrown out because he had, oh, lawyers? Not just any lawyers. Your uncle didn't hire lawyers from Silicon Valley Community High or Community College, okay? He hired the creme de la creme. Apart from Wade, you, you believe your uncle did not have any other relationships with any other boys whatsoever? Absolutely, 100%. That's not my uncle. That's not who this man is. And I understand that people think he's oh, weird and that he's different, but he's not a... He was a pedophile. He fit the exact profile of a pedophile. He spent his sexual prime with little boys. Child molester. But can I just say, Brandy, it happens every time. Like, and I'm, I'm not saying you're, he's guilty. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. But one thing we have to understand is no pedophile's family goes... 
I w I'm not surprised at all. He was always a creeper. This happens over and over again. It's, exactly. I he did this. He wasn't exactly. this person around us. He was a loving right. dad. That's he true. was a loving cousin. So, you know, really, mm -hmm. uh, that argument doesn't... Secretive course, by nature. Yeah. It's not an argument. Now, now, and I understand what you're saying, but here's the thing. The reason why I'm speaking out is because I do know Wade and his family, and I do know their motives. Yeah, they're so awful. And when's the last time you spoke to them? I have a very large family. You don't see my other cousins coming up and saying, my uncle was innocent, my uncle was innocent. Although they know he was. <laughs> no, <it's coughs> they know he's guilty. They understand that narrative of, of course, family's going to defend family. But I'm coming from a different place. Mm -hmm. Even if he wasn't my uncle, I know the people that are accusing him, and that's why I'm speaking out. It's not because he's my uncle and I don't want my uncle to be a bad guy. If he was guilty, I would sit back and shut up. I wouldn't have anything to say if I thought that he was. And, uh, because I know him. As well. You know, you shouldn't speak so ill about somebody you once dated. It doesn't look good on you. No matter what, you shouldn't speak ill of people like that. We're deciding ourselves whether we should continue to play Michael Jackson music or not on our station, as many stations are now banning his music around the world. What's your message to the world and Michael Jackson fans? You know, I, to that I have to say, right now with social media, it has given people a voice to think that they are judge and jury. They think that they're allowed to create someone's fate based on their own belief. No, your uncle created his own fate. He was a pedophile who molested, we don't even know how many children. It is unfortunate that male victims don't often come forward, but when they do, they are telling the truth. And media has a way of slandering people and making you believe things that they shouldn't. Oh, here we go. Slandering, talking about the media. Talk, it's always the media's fault. The media loved Michael Jackson back in his prime. Don't tell me otherwise. So I, I really want people to, to understand that this man has fought his fights. He has been humiliated on more than one He was a drug addict as well. On occasion. He did everything that he was supposed to within the, the eyes of the law. He was investigated for over 10 years. No, he was not. Why... Why? Why do you guys keep repeating this same old crap? First page, first paragraph, FBI website. I read it on this series, number two, about ranting about leaving Neverland. It says very clearly that the FBI assisted local authorities for two years. Child molestation is not a federal crime. It is something that is taken care of by local authorities, not the FBI. He was not investigated for 10 years. That is a lie. Stop repeating it. There's not one shred of evidence against him. And I not one shred of evidence, however, they arrested him and brought him up on charges. I think that that needs to be respected. I really think that... It no, I'm not going to respect an obvious pedophile. And I'm sorry there's people out there who are still too stupid to figure this out. People are not a judge and jury, and just because somebody puts out a... No, we're not the judge and jury. You're right. We can use all of the information. We don't need to be limited by technicalities and arguments from lawyers. We can actually look at the totality of the evidence and the multiple allegations and the multiple payouts. A one-sided film doesn't mean that he should go down in history as a... A one-sided film. Excuse me, but you and Taj put out a video on YouTube responding to that. I didn't notice anything that was balanced. It seemed pretty one-sided to me. Child molester and be pulled off of... Rules for thee, not for me. Off of radio station. Randy Jackson, Obviously. Michael Jackson's niece, we do need to leave it there. We thank you very much for coming on and speaking to us uh, today. So now listen to this. Thank listen. Thank you for your time. Thank you, I appreciate it. Can Thanks, I ask you one very quick question? We've only got 30 seconds left. Is it true that you were, when you were dating Robson, that he cheated on you with Britney Spears? Is that, is that, is that a true? Because I did read that. That is 100% true. Lie! It'll be what? Lie! And she has to figure, she has to finish on another lie. If you look at when 
Brittany and Justin broke up. That was in 2002. We've already determined that her and Wade stopped dating sometime around 1998. Even if I give her two years, that's 2000, not 2002. And quite frankly, are we really sure that it was Wade and Brittany? Do we even really know this? I mean, I don't keep up with celebrity gossip, so somebody will have to let me know. I I never really knew. I thought it was Kevin Federline, but I, I don't know. I guess I'm wrong. In any case, this woman is a liar. Her story makes no sense. I don't know what she's doing other than trying to protect her her stipend that she gets monthly, I'm sure, from the Jackson Estate compliments of Katherine Jackson. I'll be back. <laughs> 